In the previous lesson, we analyzed the deviation from plane for each panel on our roof. These panels were imported from Excel points representing the XYZ of each four points of the quad panels. Now we're going to export the deviation values to an Excel spreadsheet in order to prepare a schedule for Revit documentation. So let's move into Dynamo here. We're working with the file from the previous tutorial. And zooming into the upper right here, we have our polygon plane deviation. That's the first thing we're going to want to write to our Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to maximize Dynamo. We're going to be working entirely within Dynamo for this lesson. I'm going to open up our library and type in Excel. Now we have this read option. We're actually going to use the write option for Excel. So I'll drop that onto the canvas and move this into some clean space. Now, taking a look at the inputs here, we have file path, sheet name, start row, start column, and data. Data is going to be our deviation. So we have these deviation values over to the left here. I'm just going to plug that into data now. And just to give ourselves some more room and see where the wires are going, let's drag these two up. Let's move our plane deviation up as well. So file path. We can insert an existing Excel file or create a new one. We're going to create a new one in this case. I have my file path to my course folder. If I click up in Windows Explorer, I can hit Control C to copy that file path. And now I'm going to add a string node to Dynamo. In the cursor here, I'll hit Control V to paste the file path. And something worth noting here, uh, I want to hit another slash here and give the file path a name. Let's call this deviation. And we'll do dot xlsx for the Excel file path. Now we currently do not have that file path in our folder. But when we create the Excel write command, it should generate one for us. Now for sheet name, I'm going to copy and paste this string node. Let's just give it a new sheet name. We'll call it roof panel deviation. We'll plug our string into sheet name. Start row and start column. These are zero based, so if we say zero row and zero column, that will be the top left cell of our Excel worksheet. So move these up here. And let's drop a number node onto the canvas. Now we're going to start it on the zero column. Uh, I actually want to give myself some room for headings, so I'm going to copy and paste this node and say 1 will make our start row the value of 1. So we should be ready to go. We have our data, we have our file path, and all the other parameters we need. I'll hit run and see what we get. You can see here if I reference into my explorer folder, I have a deviation file. Let's open that up and see what it gives us. You can see our preview is already giving us the deviations. You can see it's open on my other screen, and we have a series of deviations in our Excel file path. We should have 225 total. As you can see it's at 226 because remember we're starting on the second row here. So Excel is giving us some results, but at the moment we can't reference these very easily to a schedule. We only have the deviation values. So let's first try to link some more information from our panels here. Our data is currently our plain deviation. We want to link this to, say, a Revit object ID. Um, so we have some more information over here. We have our XYZ points, and we have our adaptive components. This is what I want to look at in this case. For now, I'm going to drag this down, all this Excel stuff, because we're going to work closer down with the Revit geometry. And you can see we have all of our adaptive components. Uh, this output here is just giving us the family that we're working with. You can see we have our IDs here. This is what we want to get. So I'm going to clear the search bar and type in ID. 
you can see if I scroll down to the Revit option, I can query the ID of an element. So I'll select ID, dropping that onto the canvas and plugging in our adaptive component. I'll hit Run. And now we have this number matching the series of IDs in our Revit document. So this will be the information that we want to write to Excel. And we have to find a way to combine that with our plane deviation. So just to clean up this definition a bit, let's drag all of this down. We're not going to be working with that right now. This is color colorizing our panels in Revit. And let's drag this element ID up. So the first thing we want to do to combine these parameters is create a list from our plane deviation and our element ID. I'll clear the search and type in create list. Dropping that onto the canvas, I'm going to hit the plus sign once. We have two inputs now. I'll plug in our plane deviation and our element ID, and I'll hit run. You can see we have a list of plane deviations, and that's followed by a list of IDs. So simple enough, but it's not currently in the order that we want. If I plug this into data, let's see what our results are. So this is kind of a wacky way of looking at it. Uh, you imagine you, you generally don't want all of the data in one long row. So we actually want our data to be in columns. So in the same way you would transpose in Excel, we're going to transpose in Dynamo. I'll type in transpose and add that to the canvas and hit run. So this makes the data more legible in Excel as well as Dynamo. In this case, each main list represents the panel deviation of that element as well as the element ID. So I'll plug this into data and hit run. Now you can see our data is much cleaner and we can control the name of these columns in Dynamo, but I'm just going to do it really quickly in Excel here. We have panel deviation and panel ID. I'm going to move these columns out a bit. And we probably want panel ID before panel deviation because this is how we're identifying the panel. So in order to do that, I'll move over to our list create and I'm plugging in our ID at index zero and our deviation at index one. So hitting run again. See now we've reopened this value and we've lost some of our headers so we may need to add these again. This time we've created the right order. We have our ID and our deviation. And the last thing we want to add is just a set of numbers so we can have an ID to read panel number one, panel number two, etc. And the quickest way to do this is to create a number sequence based on the count of our list. So I'm going to type in list count and we want this core list action of count. I'll plug in our ID output into this list count. This could just as well be our deviation output or our component output. All we're getting is the number of items in this list which will be 225. So now we can see that our list count is 225. I'll clear our search bar and I'll type in sequence, number sequence, dropping that onto the canvas. I'm going to move all of these guys over to the right a bit. So hovering over this, we can see we have a start number. We want that to be 1. We have an amount that's going to be our list count of 225, and we have a step which will be the spacing between numbers, which will also be 1. So I'll clear the search bar and type in number. 
scrolling all the way up, we have our number option. I'll change this value to 1 and plug this into our start and step. So this should be ready to go. Let's just trust it. I'm going to hit plus sign. And we want this at the beginning. So we want our deviation to be the last value. I'll plug that into index 2. We want our element ID to be our first value. I'll plug that into index 1. We want our number sequence. Our element ID should be our second value, sorry. And our number sequence should be our first value. So having all of these together, we've now created a list. If I hit run, let's take a look at what that list is giving us. The immediate output are three stacked lists of number sequence, panel ID, and deviation. But when we transpose it, we have it nicely cleaned up where we have panel number one, Revit ID 296415, and panel deviation 0 0.078. Over in Excel, we now have our spreadsheet written out for each panel. And we can call this panel number Revit ID and deviation from plane. So this is a quick way of writing this document to Excel, pre preparing it for a spreadsheet that you may want to add to your Revit sheets. You can also reference this document for other Dynamo files and control other elements in your projects.